I very recently completed a two-day foundations class in version 3 of the Information Technology Infrastructure Library, or ITIL. This pod, uh, vlog is um, a synopsis of what I learned in that class. Uh, understand that a two-day foundation class in ITIL is certainly not a comprehensive treatment of ITIL, and in no way prepares one to be fully competent in it. It is very general overview of the core ITIL concepts and processes. The Information Technology Infrastructure Library, or ITIL, I -T -I -L, defines the organizational structure and skill requirements of an information technology organization and a set of standard operational management pra procedures and practices to allow the organization to manage an IT operation and associated infrastructure. The operational procedures and practices are supplier independent and apply to all aspects within the IT infrastructure. Uh, it's worth pointing out, and it's important to point out, that ITIL, I-T-I-L, and IT Infrastructure Library are registered trademarks of the United Kingdom's Office of Government Commerce. ITIL takes a service management or customer-centric approach rather than a technology-centric approach towards IT management. Service management is a set of standardized organizational capabilities for providing value to customers in the form of services. ITIL version 3 was released this year in 2007. It differs in two significant ways from the earlier versions of ITIL. Earlier versions had a process orientation, where version 3 takes a service life cycle orientation. Earlier versions were comprised of eight volumes, where version 3 is comprised of five volumes. ITIL version 3 breaks service management lifecycle into a set of processes. There are five core processes, and each core process defines additional processes. Eight of these processes span the entire service lifecycle. The five volumes in ITIL version 3 are named after the five core processes. A service is a means of delivering value to customers by facilitating outcomes customers want to achieve without the ownership of specific costs and risks. Every service has a defined service owner. The service owner is accountable for a specific service within the organization, uh, regardless of the underlying technology. A process is a set of coordinated activities combining and implementing resources and capabilities in order to produce an outcome which directly or indirectly creates value for an external customer or stakeholder. The first of the core services, Service Strategy. Service Strategy provides guidance on how to design, develop, and implement service management as an organizational capability and strategic asset. The service strategy process defines the financial management, service portfolio management, and demand management processes. Note that the financial management and service portfolio management process spans the entire service lifecycle. Service design provides guidance for the design and development of services and service management processes. The service design process defines the service catalog management, service level management, capacity management, available, availability management, IT service continuity management, information security management, and supplier management processes. Note that Capacity management, availability management, and supplier management processes span the entire service lifecycle. Service term uh, transition provides guidance for the development 
and improvement of capabilities for transitioning new and changed services into operations. The service transition process defines the change management, service asset and configuration management, release and deployment management, and knowledge management processes. The change management and service asset and configuration management and knowledge management processes span the entire service lifecycle. Service operations include, includes guidance on achieving effectiveness and efficiency in the delivery and support of services so as to ensure value for the customer and the service provider. The service operation process defines the event management, incident management, request fulfillment, problem management, and access management processes. And finally, continual service improvement provides guidance on how to identify ways to improve process effectiveness, efficiency, and cost effectiveness. Continual service improvement process introduces the Deming model, which consists of plan, do, check, and act. It also introduces a seven-step improvement process. I believe that there is a great deal of benefit to bringing together a wide array of industry standards of good practice and compiling them together into a coherent whole. And that's exactly what the ITIL model does. Many IT organizations can benefit by training their staff in the basic ITIL model and principles. IT organizations can benefit by adopting many of the ITIL concepts. There are some dangers associated with ITIL. The two most salient dangers that I see are confusing the model with reality and interpreting ITIL as dogma. A model is a facsimile, an aid used to assist IT organizations in understanding what the organization does and how to improve their processes. ITIL provides guidance not religious dogma. IT organizations need to remain flexible as they integrate ITIL practices into their organization. I think it's worthy to note the quality of the ITIL Foundations classes does vary somewhat from vendor to vendor. I found that the two-day ITIL Foundations class to be too fast-paced, filled with terminology and excessive acronyms, and somewhat incongruent, but I did pass the exam. That's all for today.